Good morning. I want to talk a little bit about the six healing sounds. Um, people are contacting me sometimes to ask about them and want to learn them. It's very important to understand that using the sounds is regulating your energy in your body. So I always insist anyone studying with me first learn some basic elements of traditional Chinese medicine as well as diagnosis so they can look at their tongue in the morning, see what condition they're in on any given day and make adjustments accordingly. Um, these sounds were first seen in writing by someone named Tao Hong Jing from the Mao Shan School of Taoism. And people talk about vibrating your organs, but the directions require that the sounds are inaudible. Now, I'm a musician also, so I can tell you, I've done quite a bit of analysis on this. Um, one of the most skilled masters of our generation was someone named Dr. Xie Pei Qi. He was a Baguazhan master and a doctor with very high attainment. I took footage of him from several different days and analyzed it with a chromatic tuner and a frequency analyzer to see what frequencies he was making and what notes he was making, only to find out that the notes were not whole tones and they weren't even the same note two days in a row. My own experience has shown me that making sounds, the sounds themselves, and the intention influences the flow of chi in certain meridians. Um, when these exercises are done, Again, you would want to look and see, do I have an excess of a certain energy that I have to get rid of? If you just go through the exercises, you could be dumping energy that you need, okay? So whenever we do any of the organs, based on five element theory, we also complete by doing certain sounds to help us center. One of those sounds is for the triple warmer or the sanjiao or the three cauldrons. And I'm gonna show it to you just to give you a little bit of an idea about what I've done with this. I've studied a lot of other teachers' interpretations of these things in person and in writing and essentially I've even found there was a, a Qigong association that gave recordings of the sounds but I'm not Chinese I didn't grow up in China but my mother had sounds that she would make the healing sounds are not really linguistic they are the sounds of the human organism. All organisms make oohs and ah type sounds when they are in various mind states. So this one here is, in English, I look at when our mother would try to calm us down and she would use a shushing sound and she would shh. She would have that intention of lowering your energy and even use her hand to calm down. So this one here can be done in a chair with the arms hanging, standing with the arms hanging, or lying in bed. So a lot of times if I were doing some of these sounds before going to bed, I would finish with the last sound lying in bed, okay? Again, the sound is like a shushing sound. You would do them, they're very similar to when we curse. We don't curse 36 times to feel better. 
We curse until we feel stupid cursing. Until the energy is expressed out and balance is achieved. When that happens naturally, you won't feel a need to continue. So you don't really necessarily have to count how many breaths you do or do a certain amount of breaths. You really have to search for the internal feeling of the calmness going over your entire body. So we'll just do a couple here standing. Now as I'm doing that, I'm sinking and releasing my tissue all the way down to my feet. Okay? Now, you do it without the sound. And you'll find that as you do it without the sound, the air has more time to pick up excess heat and let it out. You'll feel it roiling past your lips. But this is a good centering sound that you won't hurt yourself with per se. Um, but this is actually a very complicated thing that will not be just taught in a course. Thank you for your time.